Okay, my camera went off. So just tell me something to, to, to give it everybody an understanding of this. You're so traumatized from seeing a girl in the Franklin County god awful jail that you're very, very happy. And so are so many people that I've written a book. Yes. And that we can now take that book and gather our testimonies and gather more people to back yes. up what you say. They're handing out death penalties, slow uh, death penalties, not jail, in my opinion, through medical neglect. And when someone oh hasn't God. even been found guilty or. You know, I don't believe in capital punishment, honestly, but that, they haven't been sentenced to the death penalty. They're exactly. sick addicts, aren't they? Exactly. And they're mentally ill and they're out of their addicts. Yes. So this girl, go ahead. So um, it was in 2008. Um, it was really my first time um, going to jail for anything serious. And there was a lady in my dorm who um, was coming off of heroin and she was placed on a top bunk. And um, part of heroin withdrawal is you have seizures. So she should not have been on a top bunk, and she was. And, um, and you guys had kind of told him, she shouldn't be on a top bunk, she's, she's going to go through withdrawal. She's yes. already, you could tell, you could see her getting Yes, I mean, yeah, you could tell that this lady was going to be sick. Um, and they didn't care, she was on the top. And um, I was up talking in the middle of the night with a friend in there, and she had a seizure and fell off of the top bunk. On the way down, she cracked her head, because you know, the beds are steel, so she cracked her head. And um, she was on the floor, still having a seizure, foaming at the mouth, and her head was completely cracked open. There was literally a pool of blood on the floor. And you guys are all standing there, so you were freaking out. We're, we're freaking banging out. on the door. Now like, there's inmates. Most of them have addiction, but some of them are just people in yes, there, right? Yes. Boy, no we are. We were for, because you, we could tell that this this lady just really got hurt falling off this bed. So we all went and banged on both the doors. It took the guards like 20 minutes to get down there. Um, once they did, um, the lady guard that came in um, kicked her right. or whatever and was like, ma'am, are you okay? And was kicking her. And she was clearly, this woman was unresponsive. And they were like getting pissed off because the lady wasn't answering. And they're like, ma'am, screaming at her. Like, and you her head is crying. Yeah, we were yelling at the guards like, get her out of here. Like, get her to a hospital. Call an ambulance. Her head How is cracked open. Using? I want to say she was in her early 30s. Okay. Yeah, her early 30s. So um, they end up... Um, what you could tell she had a head, her head was cracked open, so that's a, ba a back or neck or, or, I'm sorry, not a back, a head or uh, neck injury. She should not have been moved. She should have been laid flat on, on right. a, one of those stretcher things or whatever. Well, they took her out in a wheelchair, okay, Lit, like hoisted her up and placed her in a wheelchair, okay, and um, she's gushing blood. Um, and then they wheel her out. They Who have cleaned up the blood. <laughs> the inmates. Yeah, the I runners. know. They don't have bleach or anything, right? Oh my and god. AIDS, hepatitis. Yes. You never know. And they're just the a, runners cleaning up. A girl. A that I, no I, when I was just in jail, thirty about thirty days ago, I was talking about this story, and a girl that I was in there with, she remember she was a runner. She's like one of the ones who always, always goes to jail and is a runner, and she remembered cleaning that up. She remembered this incident. Well, I ended up going to CBCF. Wait, first the you. lieutenants came back. To oh yeah, the lieutenant the lieutenants came um, into the dorm with um, a bunch of white pieces of paper and told us that we all had to fill out. Uh, witness statements because the girl had ended up dying at the hospital and they said she died from a brain aneurysm unrelated to the fall. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. So unrelated to you unrelated. Feel that that was a brain in aneurysm. Absolutely not. She died because she fell off that bed. It took them 20 minutes to get into that dorm. She was then kicked by a guard. She was then hoisted into a wheelchair, and she was not properly treated for before she made it to that hospital where she died. And how many? Uh, there's also, you know, that happens a, a lot in that county jail. Yeah, you? it does. It I happens mean, all the time. It's not. Unfortunately, we're not exaggerating. Absolutely not. Absolutely right. not. And it was. Um, to, it was obviously the family felt that she was neglected as well because when her I family stepped up for her because most people with their families don't know they yes the family stepped up for her and right before I got out of CBCF where I met you that's where I ended up going and um, I was in like my last few weeks at CBCF and I got called into the director's office because I had two private investigators there to speak to me that were hired by the family in regards to what happened to that lady. And I told them exactly what I just told you. And so had everybody else. They had already, there was a couple girls in the Elvis house that they were able to track down and speak to. And everybody told these people how the guards kicked her and how they like flung her into the wheelchair. 
So I don't know whatever happened. And all it, the but, other inmates are like freaking. How much trauma did oh this cause you personally? It, I mean, we're all in jail, and a lady died. She died. I mean, we didn't know her. We, none of us. She had just gotten in there. Oh, just gotten in there. It was like the night she got in is when this happened. Did she say anything? Did you hear her talk about her? Anybody? Or nope. Anything? Just said she was going to be sick, and she's she was, bracing herself to get sick. Yeah, she was you bracing herself to, to get sick. Yeah. Because there's no help in there. So no, there was no helping to, it. Yeah. So, because when you come in, people ask you, are you going to be sick? Yeah, because they want you to smell poo all over your Or body. they want your food. Or they want your food, <laughs> right? That's true. And so, it is. Yeah. It's pitiful. It is. Because you starve in there. Yeah. You're starving. <laughs> but there's no, so the, the milk right now is powdered, right? When I was there, at least they had cartons of milk. What's the milk um, like? Well, it's, yeah, it's powdered milk. And I just talked to my friend who's in there last night. And she's like, guess what, Michelle? We don't even get milk anymore. We get water. She's like, the milk is so watered down that it's like clear, like totally diluted, it's clear. So yeah, there's no do more- Do we ever get milk. gym time or outside air? <laughs> do we, do we yeah. get outside air? No, I went to the gym one time and there's nothing even in the gym. Remember they used to have, they used to have treadmills and ping pong tables and we would never get to go. Right. And now we did go to the gym one time and we all stood there. There's nothing, nothing to do. we just stood there like, why are we even in the gym right now? But a human body to process food that they don't give us in the jail needs um, to have some sort of exercise besides walking in a circle. They 